Hey y'all, hey, it's Tracy Times. Time for another time with me, Tracy T. And we are having a super fantastic special edition of Live at Lunch. Why? Because I am literally live. Not just me in the house by myself live with you, but I'm live with other people. My stylist, Angie Kasser, Hair Angel Love, is here. Well, I'm here with her. Cause she's, this is where she, she works. But I'm getting my hair done. You can see we've already started the foundation part, which is doing the braids for my crochets, which I love. And, oh my gosh, you know, in the continuation of Live at Lunch for August, y'all gonna have to deal with me because I got my mask on because we gotta be appropriate, right? But I want you to see it, you know, every day amazing. I'm still doing it, still doing it, still true to it. We are gonna have a fantastic conversation because it's still Black Business Month. It's still August, and we still gonna do this thing. Mask or not, we're gonna be completely appropriate, but we're also gonna make sure that we get this information in. So I'm not gonna miss a Wednesday because I told y'all I was gonna do this, and I am. Every Monday, Wednesday, and Friday in the month of August, we're gonna have at least one black-owned business. But today, we don't get one. We get two, not one, but two black-owned businesses in one episode. Why? Because that's how we do it. That's how we do it. So today we're gonna to have a conversation with my stylist, Angie Castor, with Hair Angel Love. And then we're gonna have a conversation with one of my beloved friends who has also done my hair, Adrienne Hughes with Panache Styles. So we're gonna get started with it. I don't have to wait and get her in and have her connect live because she's here. <laughs> so I'm gonna take my glasses off because they keep steaming up y'all. So. <laughs> We're gonna take one second because I want Angie to share this live so her other clients on her page can see it. And I want you to know that you're in for a treat because you're getting ready to hear a story, a, a testimony about how you can achieve your goals and dreams if you stay focused, dedicated, and you have a covenant with God. Hello, somebody. Okay, so now let me say this before we go any further. If you have not registered to vote, make sure you register to vote today. If you don't know how to vote, let me know and let me tell you I can give you what you need to get registered to vote. It's absolutely important. Here's the other thing that I want to make sure you do. Stop fooling with foolishness. What do I mean? Don't get distracted. Don't get tangled up in the foolishness of what anybody else has to say about anybody other than you. You need to register to vote. You need to vote. And if you want to continue to have four years of what we got going on right now, then don't do anything. Stick and stay. But if you want to see something different, you better register and you need to vote. And, and like I told everybody, Scooby-Doo could have been on the ticket and I would have voted for Biden. Now we got Harris and that's who I'm voting for. So don't even have to ask me that. And I can tell you right now, if you want to continue to keep up the foolishness we got going on now, then keep, keep, well, just stay at home and don't vote. Don't vote and see what happens. But I'm not here for that today. I'm here for something bigger and better. I am here for black-owned businesses. I am in a black-owned business. I am sitting in a black-owned business right now. And I want you all to know that Angie Castor and Hair Angel Love, located at 2740, I always get the address wrong. 2740 Bartlett Boulevard. I got it right. 2740 Bartlett Boulevard in Bartlett, Tennessee. Hair Angel Love. If you have hair, Angie can do it, period. That's it, that's all. So we're gonna have a conversation with her as a black owned business. And Adrian, you can wave. Adrian, you can wave. She's up next, she's up next. So I got two for one today, it's like a coupon. For my coupon because y'all know it's always wonderful when you do two for one. So Angie likes to keep busy. And I am going to, let's see, I want to make sure I get comments and say, who's out there? What y'all doing? How y'all doing today? What's going on? Oh, it's lunch time. What y'all eat for lunch? And you see, we have masks and we are making sure that we are protected. We're going to talk about the safety measures that had to happen before I sat in this chair and those safety measures that have happened up till we got to this point where we're live with you. So first, I want to make sure that I do a proper introduction. Angela. Caster, yes. <laughs> Hair Angel Love, owner, proprietor, professional. Welcome to Live at Lunch. Why, thank you, thank you, thank, thank you. Thank you so much for, for being here. Us. So glad to be here. 
My hair is so glad to be here. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so my scalp is so happy to have had some service. Yeah. I am delighted. I'm not going to take my mask off, but I'm going to just have it here so my voice can project a little bit better and right. we can still be compliant. So Angie, tell me about your process. How long have you been doing hair? I have been doing hair for a little over 20 years now. You know, we all started in the kitchen. So I started when I was like maybe 11 or 12. Wow. And I got my license right out of high school. So wow. I've been licensed uh, for about 20, about 20 years. Oh my gosh. Okay, so you knew at a young age you just loved doing hair? Uh, I knew at a young age I liked the idea of hair. Uh -huh. But initially... I wanted to be uh, in the WNBA. <laughs> you wanted to be in the WNBA? I wanted to be a basketball player who played in the Navy. Oh so my god! I was going to go to the Navy and, and hair is going to be my side thing Okay. Uh, early on, but then I realized that I was pretty good at it. Okay. So I was like, oh, so hair kind of took over uh, my athletic ability. <laughs> Wow, now that's some news to me. I didn't know you wanted to be in the Navy and play basketball. That's right, great. Right. Now, so what motivated you to pursue the other interests that you had in terms of doing hair? Well, after doing my mother and grandmother and aunties, and my uncle had a girlfriend who was a licensed stylist at the time. She okay. used to come to my grandmother's house and do my grandmother's and my mother's hair, and okay. I just got obsessed with her. Okay. I got obsessed, and she was teaching me. She would teach me everything she knew. Her uh -huh. name was Candy. Uh-huh. And uh, just watching her and hanging out with her, I became more and more in love with it, because she was showing me different things, and okay. just the creativity of it. Wow. So, and so, that's what I Candace, like. thank you wherever you are in the universe. <laughs> I know, right? It's amazing, but that's a fantastic lesson about how you can inspire people just by doing you and taking time right. to be with other people and show your craft. Right. That's important. Right. So then you, you were at a young age, you, you fell in love with hair, right. and then you in high school. Now, if I remember this correctly, they had cosmetology school Correct. in high school. Hamilton, Hamilton High School. We had uh, cosmetology. I started out at East. Okay. And then I transferred to Hamilton High. Uh, Miss Brown <laughs> was my cosmetology teacher. At the okay. Time. They don't have that hardly. And they have it, but I think it's like Botech or something. Okay. All right. And so you had, you were able to graduate from high school Right. And then get your state board? I took, I went to cosmetology class. I took a class. So it was one of my classes, cosmetology. Wow, okay. So um, throughout the whole school year, you're preparing to take your state exam at the end of okay. the school year. Okay, okay. Um, some girls got to take, well, you have to be a certain age, I think. To take the to, state to board. To take it. So mm -hmm. I had to wait um, until after I graduated and I was able to go ahead and take it. Okay. Uh, so I took it right out, right out of high school. Wow. Um, and literally, because you're only, you know, a, a, you're still a tenderoni, 20 <laughs> years means you've really been doing hair your whole adult life. I've been doing hair my whole adult life. Yeah, that's my amazing. Life. Even all my, all my teenage years, it's always, sometimes I, you know, I went and worked full-time jobs, but it's mm -hmm. always been in, in my life. Mm -hmm. Part-time or full-time. So, so when you were working, now this, I love this testimony. You were working at a bank and uh, you, yeah. huh? Where? St. Jude. Oh, it's St. Jude. Oh, <laughs> are you working at St. Jude? Yeah. We love you, St. Jude. <laughs> I, I had I had bank because I got money on my mind right now, y'all. <laughs> <laughs> she was like, don't say I was working at a bank, I was working at St. Jude. Uh, uh, we were talking about county. It, it, I, see, in a county. I was going to say, it was something with money, yeah, okay? It was and I just made it be bank. And she was working at St. Jude. We love you, St. Jude. Thank you for all the wonderful things you do. Yes. And you still had the dream that you wanted to do hair. So what did you do? I did. I, I had my son early on. Um, so I knew that I had to get a job to mm -hmm. be able to take care of him. Mm -hmm. um, so, but hair never left me. I always did it at home. So I uh, started at St. Jude, but I used that time to kind of you know, I love my job. I love working at St. Jude's, mm -hmm. but you know how any job, you always have those issues. And I was like, you know, this is not my final resting place. Mm -hmm. Like, this is not where I want to complete my career. Mm -hmm. So while I was there, I just would prepare. I would make all these little notes and cards. This is what my salon is going to be. This is what it's going to be called. I had my cards made while I was working at St. Jude's. I didn't have anybody to 
really give them to, mm-hmm. but I had made my cards, I knew what I wanted to say, uh-huh. and I held on to it until it was time. And how long did it take after you had already created a vision board and manifestation? Oh, well, I stayed at St. Jude for a little over seven years. Okay. I was there for seven years. Okay. Um, they had a change in management, and just things just started changing uh, for me. And they just didn't feel comfortable anymore. Mm-hmm. So I was like, you know, kind of, kind of like, you know, after a baby's been a great to get born, like you, you know, it's not enough room in here. Mm-hmm. You get the push, and mm-hmm. uh, it kind of, it didn't force me out, but it forced me to make a decision. Mm-hmm. It was time for me, kind of at that crossroad, mm-hmm. to be like, okay, what you want to do? Do you want to stay here and continue to be unhappy mm-hmm. and you know not in charge of your own life, or? Are you ready to kind of step out there? Okay. And I'm a Virgo, so <laughs> I wasn't really. I was. I wasn't. I was scared, but I really wasn't scared because I'm. I could take a chance. I was willing to take that chance, and uh, it worked. Wonderful. It, it worked. And so when you when you took the leap of faith and said, "Okay, say Jude, I know that the time has come. You served me well. I'm moving on to the what I call the next now." Right. And the manifestation came to fruition. What did you do? Were you an operator in another salon? Did you work from home well, on your own? How yeah, did that work? I, uh, when I left St. Jude, I stayed home. I did here at home for a little while. Okay. Um, and then I stepped out into a salon. And mm-hmm. uh, the salon at that time, the blueprint was a little bit much for me because you know I had just left my job, right. trying to take care of my son, right. daycare, and all this stuff. It kind of hit me hard. So, you know, I wasn't willing to give up. I still did hair at home. But even in that, I ended up having to go back and get another job. That's why I worked at this company called RMW. Okay. So I worked at RMW. I stayed there, still doing hair at home, still got my little, you know, salon uh, vision Mm -hmm. over here. Mm -hmm. I stayed there for about five years. Mm -hmm. And they also had a change in management. Wow. And I was just like, okay, something has to give. Divinely ordered. Yeah, something has to give. And um, I ended up leaving there and I went to work in a salon, which is where I was before I got here. Okay. Which is, uh, 901 Strands. I was an operator there for about uh, three years, two, about two years, I think. Two, two and a half years I stayed mm-hmm. there. Mm-hmm. And what did you, on the way, it, every step that you've shared so far has had a fantastic lesson in it that right. I heard that you had someone pour into you at a young age and help kind of nurture the dream that you had and and gave you time into the thing that you were interested in which is right. important right? right they didn't just blow you off and say no go on little girl this you know y'all don't have time right. for you I'm trying to get something done no. actually she actually took time to show you what she was doing right. which is huge right. then you had a teacher Miss Brown who literally gave you the skill set that she knew and the experience that she knew right. so that from a technical standpoint you would be able to take your state board and then you went on had manifested your dream had created your vision had even done business cards to prepare yeah. yourself <laughs> didn't have a single soul to give a business card no. to <laughs> but had the business cards ready because yeah. you believed in it right then said okay we'll take this leap of faith and realize that not once but twice you went to, to work the traditional job and because things happen organizationally in those jobs you it was really what I consider destiny kind of redirected right. you back to right. your, your path and purpose, right? right? And so when you got to 901 Strands, what did you learn there that has helped you get to where you are now? Uh, like you said, kind of being on the journey of kind of, you know, discovering that I'm, I'm capable just like anybody else mm-hmm. is, you know, mm-hmm. that, uh, you know, I have fears, I had, uh, you know, trials and tests or whatever. Mm-hmm. But when I got there, it was, I was at a crossroads because I was older now. Mm-hmm. When I was making those decisions to leave my job, I was younger. You mm-hmm. know, when you're young, you feel like you got plenty of time mm-hmm. on hand. Mm-hmm. So when I got to 901 Strands, it was just kind of like, you know, hey, you know, either what do you want for the rest of your life? Mm-hmm. Like, what do you want for the rest of your future? You're, you're not getting any younger, mm-hmm. you're getting older, you, mm-hmm. know, you have your kids now. So, and it's always been a, a, a second vision of mine to have my own salon. The first vision was to work full time in a salon and just do hair full time. Mm-hmm. The second vision was actually owning the salon. Mm-hmm. So I got a chance to go to, you know, to, to do the hair full time 
And it was just, you know, kind of believing in myself and just kind of being like, okay, it's either you're going to sit on the pot or you're going to get off the pot. Mm-hmm. Either you're going to do it or you're not going to do it. Mm-hmm. I've just been the type of person to wear. And a lot of people who've ever worked with me at RMW and St. Jude, I'm just not the type to like to sit down and complain about a whole lot of things. Mm-hmm. If I'm complaining about it, I'm probably making a plan to do something about it. Okay. So uh, when you get to the point to where you start to, you know, kind of be unhappy or complain, I just feel like, you know, okay, so it's time for something to be done. Mm-hmm. So uh, that was my that was my thought process. It was like, you know, what do you want to do next? Like, yeah. You know, at, you, you, I got past the phase of, you know, being fearful that I wasn't going to have enough money, mm-hmm. that I wasn't going to have enough, you know, finances to take care of my family. Mm-hmm. I got past all those fears. So now I'm actually walking in and doing what I said I was going to do. So mm-hmm. when I got there, it's just kind of like, okay, what's next? Mm-hmm. And, and and here we are. And so, here we are. <laughs> so here's one of the things I love that you, you've talked about how as you've gone on this journey to being an owner of, the, of Hair Angel Love and having the salon, that you learned as you as you went, right? right? And one of the things as a I was with Angie when she was at 901. I can tell you I came to 901 Strands because of Adrian, who we're gonna see in a minute, who's also amazing. Everyday amazing. Can you see? Can you see it on my mask? Everyday amazing. One of the things I loved about 901 Strands is that you guys had a phenomenal sense of community in the salon yeah. and that there were women who were empowering other women. You all were sharing tips and, and tricks of the trade with each right. other. You talked about how you could do techniques and, and sharing with color, talking about hair in different installation, even selling hair and having bundles. And um, there was a, a, a nail technician that was at the salon. There was um, just a whole host of empowerment that was happening there. So right. there were lessons along the way. Right. And one of the things that I think that's interesting is that it's a common misconception that black women do not support each other. Right. We, we, I don't know how that started, but I'm, I'm sitting here, uh, I'm embodying living proof that that is not true, okay? Black woman, black woman, <laughs> empowered, <laughs> empowered. We talked about her journey and how she got here. It was not, as you see, it was not an overnight experience. It was not, um, fly by night it took a lot of planning and preparation and prayer and i talked about the covenant that she had to make with god and how she by doing that it helped her get to a point because a lot of times people like to shy away from the spiritual aspect of what happens here you know naturally that there's a supernatural how did you lean into your faith base to to help you get to this point uh first of all just having a an awesome um, spiritual teacher. Mm-hmm. Uh, I like to call her. She's not. She's not my pastor. She's just a spiritual teacher, and she. I have a lot of women around me that just tell it like it is. Mm-hmm. So, uh, it was just one of those things to where you know being taught at a young age, and even from my mom, just to kind of, you know, believe in yourself and, and trust your intuition, trust mm-hmm. your heart, trust your good. Mm-hmm. Which they always, you know, the world always say women have intuitions but right. a lot of times we don't we don't trust ourselves we don't mm-hmm. trust um the voice or mm-hmm. the, you know the the calling within us however you know you want to put it mm-hmm. we don't trust the voice inside mm-hmm. so um that played a big part of one of my slogans that i always say i always tell my friends all the time if i'm scared and i've been using that slogan for years mm-hmm. if i'm scared if it scares me i almost i have to have do to it do because it. it's something that i feel like the enemy is trying to keep me from okay so that's one thing that helps me to move forward in things that i'm doing especially if i feel scared it's okay. a difference than feeling you know anxious like actually feeling a fear that you know this is not going to work but this is not it's like okay God is not the author of fear, so I know it has to work because I'm scared. Okay. All right. That's so, good. All right. So then you get here. You have the, the, the dream come to fruition. You have your salon. Hair Angel Love is a place you can actually walk in. And then COVID. <laughs> oh, wow. That's something. Uh-oh. That was my phone. I guess it was Mary J. Blige co-signing. <laughs> <laughs> we got a co-sign from MJB 
<laughs> we are live, folks. We just roll with it. Okay, sure. It was like Mary J. Blige said, you know, you look into my life. So I guess that's appropriate. That's what we're doing. We're looking into your life, Angie. And so, sure. She happens to be one of my favorites anyway, but that's yeah. funny that she just came in and co-signed with you. So, all right. <laughs> Real fast. Real fast. Yes. If you look into my life and see what I see. So, that's what we're doing with you, yes. Angie Cassidy. We're looking into her crazy. life. <laughs> um, we'll just take that as a divine nod that yes. you, you know, like, like Mary J. Blige, you have had some trials and tribulations that you've overcome, but you yes. faced them head on yes. and you continue to move forward and yes. prosper. So, right. we're going to claim that. We're going to align Mary J. Blige. Yes. Hey, <laughs> she just want to be happy. That's all. That's it. That's all we all want. That's all. She just want to be happy. So bit. we get there, and then COVID, we get here, everything's going well, and then COVID happens. Then COVID happens. What does COVID do to the business? Uh, COVID slows business down. <laughs> COVID creates anxiety and fear not only in me and my clients, mm -hmm. uh, just in the industry as a whole. Mm -hmm. uh, and it came out of nowhere. Mm -hmm. So COVID definitely uh, taught us some lessons, taught us some lessons to, to really be prepared mm -hmm. because no matter how you think you got it together, you know, things happen mm -hmm. and you have to be prepared. But it definitely uh, put some stuff into perspective for me as, you know, personally and as a business. Mm -hmm. And from a financial perspective, you had to close the shop. Yes, we did. And how long was the shop closed? Uh, the shop was closed for about six weeks. Uh, That's a long time. Yeah, I want to say it was the weeks. I don't know the weeks kept going. I was like, oh, it's one week. It's, it's at least four, a four to six weeks. Mm -hmm. I can't remember exactly, mm -hmm. but I know we closed. Uh, when did we close? March. Uh, March. 20th. We closed March at the end of March, mm -hmm. and we didn't open back to June. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it was it was it was it was horrible. That's a I long say time. About six weeks. Here's one of the things that is wonderful though six about eight. being able to have your own talent and skill and being a business owner is that in the midst of that, and we're going to talk to Adrienne in a little bit about what she did while she was out of the salon. But one of the things that Angie did while she was out of the salon is is made wigs, <laughs> and so. Making wigs, well, I won't speak for you. You speak for you. You right here. Tell them. Yeah. Tell the people. Tell the people about what you did. So, you know, being after COVID, you're sitting at home, and, you know, the first couple of days, it was like, okay, I'm just going to chill. We'll take a vacation. Mm -hmm. We'll just hang out, spend some time with my kids, and, you know, and after a while, it's like, okay, something has to give, and, you know, I'm, I, I twiddle my thumbs when I'm not doing hair. It's mm -hmm. like, I feel like um, I'm having withdrawal. Mm -hmm. <laughs> mm -hmm. So I was like, what can I do here at home and still connect with my clients, still mm -hmm. connect with the salon, the industry, and everything. So I decided to make wigs. Mm -hmm. um, it's one of those things I've always known how to do. I just never quite had the time to do it mm -hmm. and, you know, kind of sit down and do it. So during COVID, it created that space mm -hmm. for me to be able to sit down and, and make some wigs. And I actually had a live wig auction. Mm -hmm. <laughs> mm -hmm. uh, so that was pretty awesome. So we did that. I um, What else did we do? You guys had a sweepstakes or yeah, raffle? Yeah, we had, mm -hmm. I, had, I raffled off some hair bundles because mm -hmm. we sell uh, bundles here, 100% uh, virgin hair. So we raffled off. Um, some hair bundles we did we uh, shipped off or still sold the deserve hair care product mm -hmm. for some of our some of the clients mm -hmm. so those are some of the things that I did to try to still stay connected mm -hmm. uh, with the industry with the salon with my customers to mm -hmm. let them know hey you know I'm suffering in this with you mm -hmm. and to still try to bring in a little income right. just to kind of keep me up uh, you know, keep food on the table. Right, <laughs> right. And there were some clients who were um, so exceptional. <laughs> I know, <right? laughs> who were able to completely rock out yes, their hair during, yes. during the first parts of COVID. When all we were kudos to you, Tracy. <laughs> all kudos. Tracy literally was the number one customer who made me so proud. During COVID, she did not walk around with her hair matted to her head. She did not have bed head. 
the whole time that we were in COVID. So yes, I was very proud. And here's one of the things I want you all to know. We're going to talk about techniques and different uh, service offerings in a minute, but I want you all to know that my hair literally just before the salon closed, Angie and Adrian had a photo shoot that was phenomenal and I volunteered to be a model for Angie and I told her she could do whatever she wanted to my hair, okay, completely open. And she took me up on that, y'all, and my natural hair that had been natural for a good zillion years, she actually cut it and relaxed it. Yeah. And so if you don't know what that means, that means so in the land of, of African-American hair, if your hair is naturally kinky, coily, or curly, the relaxer straightened all my curls out. Right. And we did that, and literally, like in the next couple weeks, it was time to go into to, to absolute quarantine. <laughs> I was able to just get in and get my hair crochet braid, which is one of the techniques that we're do this is what we're doing today. And, but my hair not only had it not been relaxed in forever, we also cut the sides down because I was getting ready to be funky, fresh, and fly. Right. Well, you can't be funky, fresh, and fly in a pandemic, okay? <laughs> you gotta pick a side. Either you're gonna be funky, fresh, and fly, or you're <laughs> not. <laughs> it's gonna be funky and you're fresh. It's gonna be funky and you're not gonna look fresh. And I wanted to look fresh and not funky. So we came up with the solution because I was, you know, if, if, if any of you have grown your hair out, you know that you get to a certain stage in hair grow out that it just isn't cute. Right. But I want y'all to know that Angie and I had regular phone consultations and we worked that thing out. Yeah. So if you go back and look at any of my live and lunch during those times, you should see that my hair was looking pretty good. I was, I, there's some days that were funkier than others, <laughs> but I also had some fake the funk moments in there, but yeah. we were always in constant consult. And so I was intentional about making sure that I was not only representing myself, but representing my style as well too, okay? And Hello? we were proud, we were proud. Thank you very much, thank you very much. <laughs> so that segues me perfectly into what are we doing now? Because a lot of times people see the end result of my hair, but they don't see, they don't get the gift of having, you know, the, to witness you working. And right. so I'm really glad that we're at this stage because um, we're, I'm in a group called Growing Great Gracefully. And on that group, there is, there are, tens of thousands of women that are in that group from all over the land and all full spectrum, black, white, Indian, everything. But you know, gray is, is an, is a, uh, they don't discriminate. Gray hair is gonna come no matter what. Men, women, you know, it, it, even children get gray hair. So on that channel, on that group, I regularly post pictures of what we're doing. If you guys, oops, I'm sorry. If you guys know that we have, I have what's called the T-Row color block on my hair that we created because my hair is like, it's a patch of gray right here. I call right. it my, my old to Bonnie Ray. It's a patch of gray or Storm or Cruella DeVille, whoever you want to call. I'm saying Bonnie Ray because she's great. But, um, and then the rest of my hair is like multicolors, right? So we created the T-Row color block to honor the gray. And in the T-Row color block, I posted after we had done this one of the times, I posted a picture of it in Growing Gray Gracefully and said that my stylist, Angie Casper, and tagged her, honored my gray in this style. I want y'all to know, let me lean in while she ain't getting it. One of the ladies had the nerve, y'all, the unmitigated gall, to come and tell me, hey E, to come and tell me, thank you ma'am, that it looked like I had extensions. At no point in time did I say I had this was my natural hair. But it is my hair because I bought it. But she, and so I just had to politely let her know that A, I've never said that, and I tagged my stylist. So this technique that we're doing right now, tell more about this technique and then all the other offerings that you have for services for clients that are every color of the spectrum. Right. Uh, speaking of that, like I wanted, it, even in opening the salon, I wanted it to be diverse. I wanted to you to walk through the door and you see a rainbow of people mm -hmm. um, being able to be here and get service. Mm -hmm. um, by me having a background with working at Regis Hair Salon mm -hmm. um, years ago, I worked in sports clips. Mm -hmm. um, so I'm comfortable with doing all phases of hair care, mm -hmm. like, you know, not just African American, uh, everybody. Uh, haircuts, hair color, you know, all of that good stuff. Uh, we accept anybody here. It's mm -hmm. not just, I never wanted to be the salon that says serve my community. Mm -hmm. I wanted to be able to serve the whole community 
um, because we all are one community, mm-hmm. regardless of your uh, race or color or whatever. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. I want good. to be knowledgeable with everyone. Mm-hmm. That's good. Um, so as far as your color block technique, <laughs> so we had we started off we were coloring your hair. Mm-hmm. We were coloring it in every other appointment almost. So um, trying to fight you. Trying to fight the gray, which a lot of my clients are trying to fight grays right now. Surrender. But COVID COVID taught us a lesson. Yeah. COVID taught us that, you know, we depend on services. We depend on our salons being open. We depend on, you know, being able to go to the nail shop. And back in the day, you know, some of these things we used to be able to know how to do ourselves. Um, so with, with that being said, we don't want to start coloring our own hair because we don't know how to do that at home. So we decided to embrace the gray and just kind of see what God was trying to push forward in your head and say, okay, you're trying to make me get this gray, but what is it going to look like? Right. Um, so I have a lot of clients that felt like that, but your gray was coming in so cute because you have just a a silver patch Mm -hmm. right here in the front, which, um, was awesome. So the idea to embrace the gray. That's where it uh T Row color block. T Row color. You gave the name T Row color block and it fits so well. It fits so well. So instead of us every time and then when you would color your hair, when we would come in and, and color your hair, the, the semi permanent it sits on top of the hair. Mm-hmm. You know, it doesn't go deep into the hair follicle. Mm-hmm. So by the time a couple of weeks pass after you've washed your face, after you sweated, mm-hmm. and you know, after you went through your everyday, you know Amazingness. Uh, amazingness, right. <laughs> uh, your color with your color would went off. Mm-hmm. So uh, instead of going through that, we decided to do the Just color block. Ahead and so when it mm-hmm. grows out, it blends in perfectly. You don't have to be so insecure about the gray. Mm-hmm. And since then, I've had so many clients coming in. They're trying to embrace their, you know, embrace their gray now. Mm-hmm. Not saying that you have to wear. Some people are not ready for it. Mm-hmm. But when yeah. you're in a situation to where you can't get to the salon, you need other options. Mm-hmm. You need mm-hmm. other ways and, and to be, to, that's one thing that I love about what I do is the creativeness of yeah. it. We're able to be as creative as, as we want. Yeah. So that was just something that, uh, teamwork makes dream work. Yeah. And we both came, we both came and kind of, you brought it up and we talked about it and, and it worked. And now it's. The word is spreading. <laughs> yes. And I can tell you, the T-Row color block ended up, of course, I named it T-Row because that's who I am. But she said, oh, so you're going to do a color block? And I was like, okay, yeah, sure. <laughs> and once I learned what the color block was, I was like, oh, yeah, that's a T-Row color block. So now that's just it. That's what it's called. She has other people that come to her and say they want that. Right. And I think that's amazing. Yeah. I will tell you that the technique that we're doing now, so many people have have seen this and not really sure what it is. So Angie, tell how we got to this point where we are now, where you're actually putting, like this is a crochet, yeah. this is called crochet braids, but what does that mean? So crochet braids is a technique, um, it's kind of sort of like, you know, getting a sew in. We're, we'll braid down the face of the hair um, and it's different braid patterns you can go for just depending on the look that you're going for. I like for my crochets, to me, in my opinion, um, crochets tend to, when you're far back off of someone or when you're just looking at a picture, it tends to look like your natural hair. It tends to look like a sew-in. Mm-hmm. So, but it's not um, as heavy on the hair as the bundles would be just a tad bit mm-hmm. heavier on the hair. So you're able, this is a great protective style for those who just want to give their hair a rest, who um, would like to, you know, like you said, grow out your relaxer, mm-hmm. you're trying to go natural, mm-hmm. or, you know, when you're just working or you're traveling, it's a great protective style mm-hmm. to kind of keep your hands out of your head for mm-hmm. a minute. Um, so we actually take this synthetic hair that you buy from a basic beauty supply store. Mm-hmm. Uh, you go and get it and... You want me to turn my head so they can right. see? Right. From the basic beauty supply store. So we use this crochet needle and we pretty much go through each braid and we crochet it in and we uh, lock it in with a knot. Mm-hmm. Um, everybody, like I said, everybody does theirs differently. Mm-hmm. I've been doing it for so long. I have several different techniques. I have done crochets on a lot of people who suffer from alopecia, which is baldness, um, you know, thinness. Mm-hmm. This is a perfect style for you. Yes, you are able to get crochets even if you have bald, uh, if you're balding or if you're thinning areas. Now, how does that work? Um, well, 
I would create a, a different braid base. Mm -hmm. um, and it's just a different technique of how mm -hmm. I would braid you. So we know that a lot of women suffer from, from balding here in this right. area. Uh -huh. How would you, how would you um, address that? It's a technique that I like to use to where um, really depends on we'll find out where her strong spots are mm -hmm. in her hair. Mm -hmm. If if this is if the top is one of her weakest, mm -hmm. we would create um, we'll create a base even from the sides, mm -hmm. and I could bring the you know the braids up. We'll cross over. Sometimes mm -hmm. I use a net, a hair net, mm -hmm. and it's really it's really all about technique. It's okay. really all about um, the technique and where your spots are. Okay, but it's it's creating a braid base. If I don't have hair, I have to create uh, a braid base from your strong point. Wherever your strong points are, I would use that to create, you know, an overlay as, okay. as you, a, a base. And then sometimes I would use a net to kind of secure it. Okay, so if you're, if you're doing the net and it's secured, then you just do the... I you do the crochet on, to top, the net. on top of the okay. net. Okay, um, okay. And it is secure. You will be able to still move it back and forth. Mm -hmm. You'll still have all of the movement as if, you know, you mm -hmm. had a full head of, uh, of braids. Okay. And then show the implement that you're using. Yeah, because this is I, crochet needle. This, this crochet needle, if any of you, put it like right there. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So if any of you have, um, this is from the 80s. Yeah. You remember, <laughs> you remember latch hooking? Yeah. That's exactly, if that looks familiar to you, yeah. that's because that is what that is. Yeah. The hair industry, the beauty industry is so creative that they find ways to take what we already have and make it be multi-purpose, right? right? And so that's what this is. So people have always wanted to know like, I love your hair, who does your hair? Angel Castor does my hair, hair Angel Love, and I have crochet braids. Now you mentioned the sew-in. What is a sew-in? A sew-in is pretty much a braid foundation where we take your natural hair and we will braid it down. There are several ways you can get a sew-in, which we call it the basic sew-in. It's where you would leave a section of your hair out wherever you would like your part, whether it's a side or a middle. You'll leave a part, a section of your hair out. We will braid the base of your hair and we'll actually take bundles and we will sew those bundles on top of um, your braid base and you can style and go as usual. Um, we also have um, a sew-in with closure. Okay. So that's when we may have a natural or, you know, you may be trying to give your hair a break and we're going to braid all of your hair down. We're not going to leave anything out. Mm -hmm. And we're going to use a lace closure to sew it down that'll give you that natural look part. Okay. Um, and you'll still be able to be uh, flexible with your hair and kind of move that part back and forth. Okay. So a sew-in um, typically lasts about... I tell people not to go over. A lot of people like to keep it in for a long period of time, but to me, uh, two and a half, maybe eight weeks, seven to eight weeks is the max for a healthy, a healthy sewing. Okay. That's when you come in and get maintenance. Even with the crochet, yeah. you can come in and you can get, even if you've worn it for a couple of weeks, I tell mm -hmm. my clients to come in and we can shampoo, we can mm -hmm. rinse, we can clean your scalp mm -hmm. even with the crochet or sewing. Yeah, so we've you done don't that. have to worry about, yes, we have done that. Yeah. Um, you don't have to worry about the, the hair, you know, over time with the elements outside mm -hmm. and that smells mm -hmm. or, you know, your scalp gets itchy mm -hmm. and dry. So you Sweating. Can, if you're in my age group, you sweat. Right. You can definitely come back in and get it maintenance, crochet mm -hmm. or sewing. Mm -hmm. And in the sew-in, what does that look like? Because people are thinking sew-in. And some people may not be familiar with that. Do you have like a special thread you use, a special needle that you use? It's just for hair? Yeah, yeah. We okay. have, um, it's, just, it's called a C-shaped needle mm -hmm. that we use for, um, for our sew-in. And we have, where's my thread? This is the C-shaped needle here. And while she's getting that, if you have questions, please feel free to ask. I want you all to, uh, hey Derek, I want you all to um, have the opportunity to ask questions. Yep, so this is the, the thread that we use and this is the C-shaped needle that we use. And we do- Oh, uh, do on that them, camera too, show that camera. Uh-huh, we do, we do keep it sterilized and make sure it's all clean and nice. So we mm -hmm. have about seven to eight of these throughout mm -hmm. the whole process. And that's that, the thread. Okay. This is the needle and thread that she used for sewing. Okay. All right. So it's just sewn into the, the braid and where the braid and the hair are matched. The, the bundle tracks are sewn on top of on top of the braid. Okay. So you can have a smooth foundation so if somebody were to rub your hair, they won't feel bumpy. Oh, or okay. It's actually sewn on top of and um, below the, the So that takes a special technique. It's definitely a different technique. 
Uh, it's, it's a special technique. Um, like I said, a lot of people offer it throughout the city, but you definitely want somebody that knows what they're doing because I've had some people who say they would never get a sew in again because they didn't have it put in right. You just have to make sure that you have correct installation with crochets and a sew in. I even have clients or people that's walked in and said that they would never do crochets again. Um, yes, there are a lot of people that's doing it in their homes. You know, they're cheaper or whatever, but you know, it tends to be, uh, it's really not the, the correct foundation to give you the results that you would like. Okay. So always go to, um, you know, an experienced stylist that'll give you the results that you want to where you don't say, hey, I don't want to do that ever again because I got it done right. and they didn't do it right. So, right. But it's definitely worthwhile. It's definitely something that you can wear every day on vacation, mm -hmm. you know, just during even, the pandemic. Right, during the pandemic, even during this time to mm -hmm. where we don't know, you know, we'll be working one week and right. not the next week. Right. So um, it's definitely something that you could, you know, try. And speaking of pandemic, when the salon was able to reopen in June, what were some of the things that you had to implement that were in addition to the regular safety measures that you already take? Um, in addition to us, because um, here, we, we, we believe in customer, ser customer service, period. I, that's just been a part of my nature. Um, just going to the salon with my mom as a young girl, just seeing the proper etiquette in the salon, we were already doing that. We were already making sure that we clean, you know, with our clients, keep our bowls clean. So mm -hmm. coming back in after COVID, even before we came back in, we had to try to find all of these sanita sanitary mm -hmm. uh, mm -hmm. extra precautions. Mm -hmm. uh, that I wanted the, um, what you call it, the hand sanitizer, sanitizer. automatic mm -hmm. hand sanitizer. You know, finding that stuff was so hard because mm -hmm. everybody was swooping up everything. Mm -hmm. So it took us a minute to kind of get our things together. We had some gracious, gracious, gracious clients who donated. When they were out and found things, we had uh, everybody would donate hand sanitizer. They would donate Clorox wipes. So that just gives you a, a heads in on the atmosphere here that, mm -hmm. you know, even our clients, they knew that we were struggling, mm -hmm. they knew that we would need it, so we had mm -hmm. plenty of donations. So we had to, when you come in now, you're getting your temperature taken at the door. Not when even first, touching the door. Or not even yeah. touching the door. Um, when you first come in, you'll have your um, hand sanitizer first, and then you'll get your temperature taken. We have a form for you to fill out, just letting us know, you know, hey, if you've been in contact with somebody with mm -hmm. a confirmed case of COVID, you will sign in, and then you're going to your prospective um, stylist or whoever. But there are definitely uh, some protocol changes, and it was difficult in the beginning, but over time, it's become second nature to us. And our mm -hmm. clients, everybody has gotten used to it. You keep your mask on, mm -hmm. you know, you, you do what you have to do to make sure that your business is running and staying uh, on top of things. I had a funny story. I had code enforcement to come in. So we're in Bartlett, so code enforcement is not shy about right. coming in on us at all. So he came in and he had watched us for a couple of days and he came, he actually walked through the doors and he said when he came in and he looked around and he said, your salon is one of the cleanest salons. At that day, he had visited 18 salons. No, wow. it was it 18? It was 18 salons I think he had visited that particular day. Wow. And he said out of that 18, only, I think it was two or three of us was actually following protocol. And he said, my salon was one of the, the cleanest salons that he had seen nice. out of the 18 that he had visited that day. And we're talking about some, he said it was some some chain salons that oh, he had wow. visited, some major salons that's up here that would have no reason not to be, right. you know, where they need to be. So that was a, a real cool pat on the back to what we're doing here at Heritage Love and everybody being on the same page right. and kind of taking the same precautions. And sanitation has and hygiene and um, being... Uh, appropriate with what you're doing with process has always been part of what happens at Hair Angel Love. Right now, there's a sanitation station here sanitation at station. Hair Angel mm -hmm. Love, and and we know from having a conversation on Monday with Tara Richardson Izell, who is a nail technician, that one of the things that you're taught, right, is is you have to know how to be clean and be safe. And so even before COVID, you were practicing those safety measures right. for every client and making sure that your workspace and the entire salon stayed clean. Right. So it wasn't a huge departure for you to elevate. It was just a matter of you getting the supplies right. and materials you needed so that you could be compliant. Correct. Correct. So now Correct. in terms of being in touch with you, we know that you do crochet. We know that you do um, sew-ins or, mm -hmm. or um, 
or using hair with bundles. What other services do you offer? We offer everything. The only thing I can say, honestly say, the only thing that we do not do here at this time is individual braids. However, we are looking for a braider. Um, a, uh, she has to be licensed and, and to do um, individual braids and different kind of braid styles. So when we get her here, um, we'll uh, you know advertise and let everybody know that. But we does it do have our, to be a her? It does not have to be a her. A hair, a hair does not have to be a her. <laughs> Just a braider. A braider. If you are okay. a braider, then come and visit us. Give us a call. Uh, the number at the shop is four two one. Uh, 6578 and we will happy be happy to talk with you and see where you are but we offer an array of styles here I mean we do a little bit of everything from natural hair to color uh, any type of coloring styles you know we do my favorite is is to cut like I, I, I love my shears I know everybody say oh stylists like to cut no I like to create so um, when I, I when I consider myself a master cutter or whatever, call me what you want, but I love, that's one of the things that I love to do. I love to take you from A to Z and just to see the difference in between. Mm -hmm. So, but we offer a lot here. We have a new stylist here, uh, Miss Brenna. Mm -hmm. She has, she does the lash extensions. Mm -hmm. uh, she does an array of styles, mm -hmm. uh, all type of things. Uh, of course, Miss Adrian, she does an array of things. Mm -hmm. um, so, you know, we can kind of take care of the whole family here. Mm -hmm. <laughs> a little bit everybody. Right. So we, we talk, do male yeah. haircuts, right. you know, any anything that you are, you know, uh, want to get done, just give us a call and we'll see where you fit in to the perspective, perspective uh, stylists that are here. And how do they schedule time with you? Because COVID mandated a shift in that. Right. So you can contact us, contact me by phone, via phone, or I. Um, you can reach out on Facebook or Instagram. I also have a scheduling site, which is Schedulicity. Um, you can look up Hair Angel Love or Angie Caster on Schedulicity or on Facebook and Instagram, and you should be able to, uh, under my bio on Facebook and Instagram, you will see the link to Schedulicity to where you can book an appointment. If you have issues with that, always, always, always give me a call here at the salon or on my cell. And what's your cell phone number? My cell phone number is 901-354-4422. What is it again? 901-354-4422. <laughs> <laughs> and you can find mm -hmm. Angie Caster on Facebook and on Instagram, Hair Angel Love, and you can schedule time with her. And what is the name of the service? Uh, the name of the, the, the link. I'm sorry. What is the name of the link where they can go in and schedule? Schedulicity. Schedulicity. Uh -huh. yep. So schedulicity.com. Yes. And so she went through it because she knows it. She went through it pretty quickly, but I wanted to like, make sure that you knew. Schedulicity. So for all of my brothers and sisters out there, you do not have to wonder who's going to do your hair. Oh. <laughs> Come to Hair Angel Love. Young, old, black, white, right. Hispanic. She does it all, yeah. right? So talk about the differences between caring for hair for an African American and a non-African American. Um, in terms of what you have to do. Is the there... base of it is the same. You have to care. Mm -hmm. um, initially, you have to care about your hair, mm -hmm. um, regardless of what race you are. Mm -hmm. If you care about your hair, you know, and you're taking different steps, and, and, and price or money wouldn't matter. A lot of people don't take care of their hair because of the financial aspect of it, but when you look at your hair, regardless of what race you are, it's an investment. Mm -hmm. it's, it's an investment. You're investing in your future just like you invest in your retirement. You're putting money away so that you'll be okay, you know, when you're ready to sit down. Mm -hmm. You take care of your hair to where when you get older, you know, when, when things are, you're not able to go to the salon mm -hmm. or you're not able to, you know, get out. Like I tell my clients, you can get sew-ins, you can get crochets, but at the end of the day, you can wear wigs. We have a lot of wig wearers these days. But at the end of the day, you want to take care of your hair underneath. Mm -hmm. You don't want to have to do wigs. You don't right. want to have to do crochets. You don't right. want to have to do sew-ins. Right. We do those things because we want to do those right. things. Or, you know, we want to be able to take care of our hair. So regardless of what side of the world you come from, um, you have to care about your hair just like you care about your body. Mm -hmm. You want to keep your body healthy. You mm -hmm. need to keep your hair healthy. Mm -hmm. So um, to me, ultimately, it's the same I think you have to, the first initial thing is to care. Mm -hmm. You have to care first. Here's another person that cares. She's over here taking care of herself. And she's going <laughs> to 
come in and, and have a conversation with me. She's got a client that she just finished, and she has another client that's waiting in the queue that is literally busy, busy. busy. It's a busy day. But one of the things that's nice about what happens here is that they honor your time because they know that they're being compliant, and you can only have one client right. at one time. So that's one of the things that made it really easy for me to be able to get both of them today because I knew that it wouldn't be what it usually is, which is under normal circumstances, this salon is packed with people and we are in here having a fantastic time talking about current events and um, and all kind of food and everything. But right now it's literally, I'm the only client that's here with Angie and then the, Adrian has one client that's here with her. And so, We'll have an opportunity whenever she slows down enough, y'all, to have a conversation with Adrienne, too. She is an owner of her own business working in Hair Angel Love, and she has Panache Style. So I'm excited to talk to her because she's done some exciting things and really very ingenious um, lives that she did during her time in quarantine that I thought were really smart. So she'll be back, and we'll talk to her. But now let's talk about the, um, the kitchen folk. Right, mm -hmm. we know, we know. <laughs> <laughs> I can't say it because we all started right. there, but you know, life moves on. Life so moves on. What, what do you say? Because we have different stylists that do different things, we know that. But what do you say if you are, if you are in a position now? Because we know that you were at home and someone started your, your journey, right? Onto right. this from being home in the kitchen. Right. What would you tell someone now who's in the kitchen if they wanna if they wanna do it, what would you say to them? If you if you are in the kitchen, if you're still doing hair and, and most of us are still contemplating, you know, going into the salon and what's stopping us, you have to take that leap. Mm -hmm. I was definitely one of those ones to where you hear people's stories and you hear people say, Oh, you know, you know, it just happened and you know I stepped out and I was like, man, you know, no, something else had to go into that. But it was literally that easy. It was taking stepping out and it's not gonna be uh, you know, butter, la la and lilies all the time. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. But you have to stay the course and you have to understand that yeah, whatever you put into it is what you get out of it. Mm -hmm. So if you're in the kitchen and you're looking to, you know, to come out of it, take the leap. Take the leap because the people will come. Once you make up your mind mm -hmm. that this is what you want to do, mm -hmm. they will come. Mm -hmm. The ones that's in the kitchen, some of those were the, some of the people that I had in the kitchen, they were pushing me to say, hey, girl, you need to get out of here. I had some great, some great, great friends, mm -hmm. um, some clients when I was in the kitchen. But I also had some that did not want me to move out of the kitchen because they felt like I was going to charge more or, you know, they was used to playing those kitchen prices and I was really undervaluing myself mm -hmm. and they were taking advantage of that. Okay. So we can't listen to those people. You have to listen. You have to listen to yourself. You have to listen to those ones, those clients who... I will say, hey, I'm going wherever you go. Okay. Those are the ones that you want to keep. So if if you're like, hey, I don't want to move because I'm going to lose, but you're not going to lose. You're only going to gain. Mm -hmm. Where and I had several people, even my um, spiritual teacher, she told me, where you lose two, you'll get five. Okay. Where you lose one, you'll get three. So okay. don't ever be worried about losing clients. You're going to gain more once you step out, and, and that's exactly. I mean, it's no other way to put it. That's yeah. exactly what happened. You know, we talked on Monday and during Live at Lunch about how the, the underlying common denominator for all these things is business, right? right? That at the end of the day, it's a hair business. Right. How do you safeguard yourself as a business owner from having potential COVIDs? And then it's interesting because as we're sitting here, because we are live and I'm remote, um, one of the services that they use a vendor that came and delivered towels, right? And it reminded me that, yeah, even though this is me sitting in the chair getting my hair done, that that man is running a business and he's connected to this business that's also running a business. So how do you forge those type of relationships when you're just getting started? Uh, it's really, uh, I mean, we we had a week. Mr. Dan has been with us for, for a while since over at 901 Strain. He was introduced to us from another stylist and it's just really like you said from the beginning uh businesses supporting other businesses and not being afraid to give those links and give those cards you know to, to help somebody else mm -hmm. to, to come about uh, but 
he understands. He he understood. Um, he understands after COVID that he must come in and, and sanitize, and he must come in to sign in. Mm -hmm. um, he respects that. Mm -hmm. um, he wears his um, you know his mask mm -hmm. or whatever because he does visit different salons mm -hmm. throughout the day. Um, but just making sure that we have you know you can't be afraid to say hey you know these are the rules now if you can't follow the rules. Mm -hmm. and, you know, just not, you, I mean, it's no other way around it. And you have a person that does towels, you have a person that comes in with supplies and mm -hmm. offers certain supplies. You have a vendor that does um, hair that you can purchase hair wholesale uh -huh. from. And then you have a special relationship with two other vendors that are connected to you and to Adrian. One of the two I will have on as a guest later this month, Angela Hughes with Deserve Hair Care Products. Right. And she, has uh, both of you are, what do you call yourselves? Consultants, uh, ambassadors, distributors? I, um, I'm a, a, a local, uh, local distributor. distributor. Adrian is, I don't know what you would call me. Adrian, She's all of the above with dessert. <laughs> she does everything with dessert. She teaches classes, mm -hmm. she sells the product, she distributes, she does a little bit of everything. And so, so another black I'll woman ambassador. supporting <laughs> another black woman's business. Right. 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 And then um, we also know that there are other products that you sell here that's um, the rosemary that I love. Right. Oh, so that comes gosh. from Lily May. Lily May Aromatherapy uh, products, uh, which is based out of New York. Um, she ships here. She's originally from Memphis. So um, I was on her team for a while and I fell in love with her products. I still use her products to this day uh, on my clients and I use her body butters with, uh, you know, with myself, with my self care days. So, yes, her products are awesome. Yeah. And, and we will yes. be having, we will have more of her products. So guys, do not forget we are having the uh, the shop, the spa and shop on September thirteenth, uh, and we will be retailing a lot of deserved products, a lot of Lily May products. So don't forget to stop by, and we will be social distancing. The, the event is in the parking lot. It will be in the parking lot, so we will be spaced out, and you'll be able to see some of these amazing. Uh, retail products that we will be putting out that we do have here locally. So t say about talk about that one more time. Spa and shop on September 13th, right here at the salon parking lot at 2740 Bartlett Boulevard. Right. And spa and shop is what? Spa and shop is so it's um we have collaborated with Ayana's boutique, which is down the walkway mm -hmm. from here, um, and we've collaborated with several other. Uh, women business owners, women and men, we have we will have estheticians, we will have massage therapists, we will have foot detox, we will have a stylist here, the stylist here talking about Yoni Steam, she'll be um, doing some of those services. So we also have a class on August the third the thirtieth, uh, to where you can come in and you can ask all kind of questions about these five services and what they're gonna offer. You can actually make your appointment. For that class, you can make, in that class, you can make your appointment for your service to be done September 13th. Okay. So we're gonna have the salon closed off. It's only gonna be appointment only okay. for that day. Everybody else will be kind of so shopping out, outside, but um, you'll be able to make your appointment for the services on the class, which okay. is August the 30th. Okay, so on August 30th, how do we say, or sign up, or raise your hand and say you wanna participate in that? So you would go to my page, or go to Adrian Hughes' page. We have a flyer there. Um, the class itself is $10, mm -hmm. and there will be light refreshment served, mm -hmm. and you can ask however many questions, if you ever had a question about lash extensions, massages, yoni steams, uh, foot detox, if you have questions about any of those, we will have the experts here to talk to you and answer your questions vividly and thoroughly to tell you about those services okay. and what you can look forward to and what to expect. Okay. And that class is $10. You would um, cash app, dollar sign, hair angel love, pay your $10, and we'll put you down, and then, they, then you have to do it quickly because we are only taking so many students. Okay. We're going to have two sessions. If the first <laughs> session gets full up, uh, filled up, we're going to add a second session, but right now, uh, we're only taking so many people because we do want to be able to social distance. Okay. Um, so, you cash out hearing to love the $10, and we will put your name down for that class. It starts at uh, 1 p.m. Okay. 
um, on August 30th. August 30th at 1 p.m. It's a class. And then at during that class is when they can sign up and get scheduled for the September service on September 13th. That's okay. Correct. That's correct. And September 13th is an in-person, outside, socially distanced, completely compliant with COVID-19 safety measures yes. event that is going to be held here. Right. And then are there going to be products we can buy there? There are going to be gonna plenty be... of retail products. And we're also reaching out to all vendors. If you have a product that you would like to sell, uh, also contact um, us here at Hanging the Love. Let us know, you know, what you're what you're selling, and we could we do have a vendor fee. You can pay a small vendor fee to set up, and you're able to reach out to the Barlet community. The whole neighborhood will be out. You know how people drive past all day. Mm -hmm. So uh, we're looking to have a great turnout. We will have food trucks um, out here. We're just gonna have just a you know a. A hair and your love kind of community event. Nice. That we're still practicing social distancing. We still will be in compliance with the rules of everything. Um, so don't 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 miss out. Wow, good. that sounds like a fantastic event. Right. And then you are going to have an opportunity to reach even more people by having this community awareness event. Are there going to be any people here who are registering folks to vote? Uh, we do have look we still have we still have voter registration cards here at the salon so we'll definitely make sure we have those out um just in case we will have matter of fact we can have a booth set up for that That's fantastic we'll have a booth set up for that so if you want to register to vote we'll have a booth set up for uh specifically that that day. fantastic That's Hopefully great. we can get you to come in and run that for us <laughs> we'll see what Chandra has to say about that yes. <laughs> hey Kylan <laughs> <laughs> you can reach a lot of people a lot of young people that day so. Again, we're looking forward to we're reaching out we want to be connected to the community yes. and so that is a fantastic event that is happening on September 13th and what time does the event begin the event is on a Sunday September 13th is on a Sunday we're going to start at 1030 and okay. it's going to run to about um, 5 is something okay. like that because we want people to be able the appointments are going to be spaced out Right. So the ones that are coming in for their appointments or waiting, they're able to go out and shop in the parking lot and kind of okay. visit the, the, uh, the vendors that will be out, visit the Ayana's Boutique down the walkway, mm -hmm. kind of visit with the food trucks as you're waiting on your appointment. So we stretch it out to that time, so we want to be able to still reach the people who believe in church right. or you know, they want to be available for their service just right. to be able to come by and stop by. Yeah, that's smart. And food trucks are going to be there. Like, and this is just a fantastic opportunity for you to get familiar with the other offerings that are in this strip mall too, because yes. they have some other some other small businesses that are including black-owned businesses in this mm -hmm. in this strip mall as well. That's right. I love that idea. I think that's great. So you have two events that are coming up: August thirtieth, and then the, that's the class, and then the outdoor event is September thirteenth. Correct. Fantastic. That's correct. I I want. I've given you. Let's see. As many of the things in my brain I can think of that we've talked about, because I'm so glad we talked about that. Yeah. We've talked about scheduling appointments with you. We talked about you. making sure that people understand that even though you are a black stylist, you do everybody's hair. Not everybody. You do hair that is on heads. But you know what? One thing, thinking about that, one thing that I try to make people, or to help people to understand is when you're in cosmetology school, they're actually teaching you how to do a certain demographic of hair. They teach you how to do ca Caucasian hair. <laughs> <laughs> I was trying to be politically correct. There's no right? reason to be, that's not politically incorrect. In cosmetology school, I just, had to, to had, I just had to step in here and say that. In cosmetology school, because I went to nail school, so nail school is one part of the cosmetology program. Yeah. You are taught how to do Caucasian hair. Yes. That is not a bad thing. Right, but the not. thing that it makes you fully understand and appreciate, and I had to lean in to make sure you understood what makes this <laughs> even more special, is when you are working with a stylist that is a person that is uh, and not, not a black person, notice I said that, when you're working with a stylist that knows how to do black hair, right. it doesn't matter what color they are. It just means that they had to go and get they some additional themselves. training for themselves yeah. and learn and stretch themselves out so they know how to do Caucasian hair and African-American hair or African-descendant hair. That means they know how to do both. Okay, that's a special, that's bonus. That's two for one, that's extra, that's an asterisk. Two for one. Okay, so I'm, I'm leaning in to tell you that because Angie's trying to, you know, be sensitive about it. She learned how to do hair that was on, on hair that was straight. 
She learned how to do straight, silky hey, hair. Everybody's hair ain't straight and silky. Mine is not straight and silky. Hello, do you see these braids in my head? So I want you to know if you are doing a stylist, and like I said, not a black stylist, I want to be clear, not a black stylist, but if you are going to a stylist that knows how to do black hair, that means that they learn that skill and trade from something other than what they were taught in school. That's okay, right. go ahead. That's right. <laughs> well, what she said. <laughs> that is so true, but a lot of people don't look at it like that, but that, that's so true. It should be technically, it should be easier for us as, especially African-American stylists, to do Caucasian hair because that's what we were originally taught. Oh. We actually had to teach ourselves or teach each we taught each other in school, in class, how to do certain styles and, you know, how to do certain things. And a lot of things for me, that's how I knew that this was something that I had to do. A lot of things for me, I, I knew naturally. Mm -hmm. Nobody taught me. Mm -hmm. I just I, I just knew how to do them. Mm -hmm. I would, you know, move my hands and, you know, I would figure it out. Just that creative, you know, brain mm -hmm. going. So, you know. That's one thing that we don't look at. So that's, that's right. One. I wanted to stress that because a lot of times we go, oh, she's black, she can't do my hair. Does she have a license? Then she knows how to do your hair yeah. because that's what you were taught, mm -hmm. okay? It's just like saying somebody that went to, to any kind of cosmetology school couldn't do nails. Mm -hmm. They may not focus on nails. Right, I know but, how to do nails. But you're taught how to do nails <laughs> yeah. in cosmetology school. It's yeah. part of the hours that you have to complete. Yeah. I just wanted to clarify that for everybody in the land. So now, <laughs> Um, speaking of doing all kind of hair, this baby over here just doing hair, Adrian, that's seven feet away from where I'm, I'm sitting right here. She is, she has a young client, y'all, that is um, not going to be on camera because she is underage. She's a minor, and I am not trying to have anybody come for Tracy T. Rose <laughs> Cole. So we're not getting ready to do that. But what we are getting ready to do is, do you have your camera positioned so that we can have it on your face, Adrian? Well, I can pause for a minute. Okay. I don't want you to stop doing the baby's hair because she is fabulous. This baby right here, I want y'all to know she came in with her unicorn socks on. With uh, The unicorn has wings. Her socks has wings. When I tell you that gave me all the life I needed for today, <laughs> I am just absolutely delighted to see her. And then she, Adrian asked her, well, what, what are you getting done to your hair today? She said, I texted you. <laughs> I sent it through Snapchat. She, I sent it through Snapchat. You, you didn't get it? We're like, what's wrong with you, lady? She's seven. And she's seven. I mean, that is just too precious. But see, here's oh, the thing I love about it. She's eight. eight. Oh, oh, oh. She's eight. She's eight. <laughs> she is getting us together today, okay? So one of the things I want to do is, even though we're in the same space, and we're going to see how this works, Adrian, what I'm thinking is, if you join me. I thought you said you want me to stop. I don't, but I want you to join me on camera. No, 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 no. On your from your phone. Oh yeah, yeah. Oh, you know how we would. Yeah. To. So what we would do if I wasn't here is that you join me on my phone. You join me on camera. So that's oh, what I want you to do. Oh. So that's what I want you to do. I do that. So now, are you on? Yeah. Yeah. So you that's are, what I'm going to do. Request you. Are you on there? Are you on my live? Again, this is live, y'all. Go to Tracy T. Row and Co. Okay. Well, let me Because I'm not on Tracy T. Row. If you are friends with me on Tracy Row, then I love you and I'm grateful that you are my friend. Know that I am doing all of my Tracy T. Row live and lunches live from Tracy T. Row and Co.'s page from now on and not from my personal page. So please spread the word for those. Like, what happened to Tracy? She's not on. Yes, I am. I'm still on Monday, Wednesday, and Friday at 1130. And I will likely have at least one guest every day and many times I'll have two and the reason is I want to be able to have the time on my Facebook page with my friends literally just be with my friends like that is my personal Facebook page and this is business so that we are having my business do there I am you on there well make me on there I start just oh did you know my, my two is it two or one you connect it no, Let's see. So. Let's see. I'm gonna see if I can add you. Say hello. Say hello, and then I'll see. You know, let me add you. But I wanted to make sure that that was clear. I want to clarify that because some people are confused and saying, you know, the Tracy T. Row and Co. This page, this business page, is drawn. Thank you for those of you that are are with me. There you go, Adrian. I see. Um, is um my business page and so i'm gonna handle my business so adrian is gonna join me on camera even though she's right here with me because she's working on her client i don't want to interrupt her time because her time is money you know time is not a reward. 
the resource. So we can get that help. So here is here. Okay, so now I'm going to be quiet. So are you going to have to leave? Oh, you know what you need? You need earbuds. Hold on. This is a standard room, I can tell all of you that are going to be with me this month. When I give the invitation to you from Barb, I told you you had to have earbuds. Now you hear why. Oh. I'm being quiet on her. Oh, I hear you well. Can you all yep, hear me? Yeah, they're connected. I can hear you. It's clear. Okay. So you can say hello to everybody. Hello, everyone. So Adrian Hughes is here with me. She has a client, and we're protecting her client's um, privacy because we want to honor the baby is underage. We are not getting ready to put the baby on camera. And what we are is putting grown asset Adrian on camera. So, <laughs> Adrian Hughes with the Nice Style. Thank you for joining your mind and mind. You're welcome. I'm coming back. Okay. Adrian is adamant about having her her whole image and brand look good. Like right now, she sees that spray bottle behind her. But what I want you to know is that spray bottle is there because she literally just finished using it because she made to make sure that her station was sanitized and clean for her client that she has in her care now. So, Adrian, tell me, how are you doing today? I'm doing great. How are you? I'm doing great. Yay. This is my first live remote. And probably my last live remote. I know, right? <laughs> so what are you doing today? Tell, tell me about what, you, what you're working on. Okay. I am working on a natural hairstyle. And um, she has chosen something on Pinterest. And it's an up style. And she's doing twists along with... Um, she got a lot going on. We'll see. <laughs> Hopefully I'm finished by the time we get through. I'll post it. <laughs> and, and she has a lot of beautiful hair. She has a lot of hair. It's thick and healthy and beautiful. Yes. So tell us about Panache Styles and how you made your transition from what you were doing full time to where you are now. Well, I was a school teacher for about 14 or 15 years. And I've always done hair. Uh, I am that kitchen beautician that you all were talking about. So when I went off to college, I was considered to be the um, campus beautician, mm -hmm. uh, but I wasn't licensed at that time. But I did everyone's hair, and I went to school for an education, elementary education. And then after that, when I came home, I continued to do hair in the kitchen. And after that, uh, maybe 2016, I had finally got my cosmetology license. Mm -hmm. And then from there, I decided that I needed to switch um, professions before I got too old. Okay. And I beg to differ on too old, because I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> well, I'm the oldest one in this house right Look, now. I was not in my 20s. Okay. When I switched, and of course, I would have loved to do hair when I was in my 20s in a salon. But at that time, I think I was 37. Mm -hmm. And I wanted to switch professions before I became 40. Okay. So that was my goal. And I wanted to make sure that I paid off all my bills, student loans, everything before I switch uh, positions. And I did. Okay. So then tell me, how was that adjustment for you? Because you, you've always loved children and you always loved teaching. And so you're able to kind of take both of those things in from one career to another, but it wasn't an easy transition. You had to make plans. What did you do? Oh my gosh. <laughs> um, yes, I did. Um, I think before I uh, quit teaching, it took me four years to get my cosmetology license. Mm -hmm. And like you all were saying, it is better to get out of the uh, kitchen and you can actually make more money. And that is so true. Mm -hmm. And so I guess that was one of my biggest things that I was like, Adrian, it's time to get out of the kitchen. Mm -hmm. You need to achieve the goals that you really want to work toward. Mm -hmm. And so I had to tell myself, start paying off things. 
uh, one of my friends, her name is Elaine, she encouraged me to go to cosmetology school. So I actually went to Tresvent Vocational School and I got 25% off because I was a teacher. And so from there, it took me four years, like I was getting a bachelor's. Mm-hmm. <laughs> I finally got my uh, license. And that last year of teaching, I think it was 2016, 2017 school year, I was teaching full time and in the salon full time. So after I got out uh, teaching, I think it was like at four, then I would run to the salon and I would be in the salon until about 11 o'clock that night. And I did that for a whole year (laughs) because I needed to build up my clientele. And I had clientele. That wasn't the issue. I had clientele, but I didn't have the clientele that I needed to sustain myself for a five-day week. Because when I was teaching, I would only do hair two days a week. So I had two days uh, of clientele, and I needed five days. Mm -hmm. So that was important to me to build my clientele before I let the school system go. And it was hard because... One, I'm a diabetic, and I needed good insurance. And I didn't want to let go of the insurance because of that, but I had a goal, a dream, and a desire. So I stepped out on faith, and I got my health together, and I paid off all the bills, and then I let go, and I was full-time in the salon. I think it was the summer of 2011. Mm-hmm. So the, the idea that you had, you make, what I hear is that you had a dream mm-hmm. and that you had to put in some real sweat equity into the dream for a year that really tested you and, and helped build your endurance for you to achieve the goal that you had set. Whether mm-hmm. people agreed with it or not, you knew what you wanted to do in your heart of hearts and you wanted to be in pursuit of it. No matter how big the challenge was, you were ready to face it. You, yes. you took that on and you knew that you had to, again, because we say that this is business, you had to make sure that you handled your business so that you could be a business that by paying cool. off your debts and then making a sacrifice. One of the things that I want to point out that you did that I think is exceptional is that you said you went. it took you four years. And in that four years, like you were getting a bachelor's, you went four years because of the time that it took for you to be able to invest in it. Not that it would have taken four years, but because you had a full life, a full, as people say now, a whole full-time job. And anyone that knows any educator knows that being an educator is in of itself a full plus time job, right? Mm-hmm. And so for you to be able to create the balance of that, I think is, is to be celebrated and applauded. I really do. Because you could have easily said anywhere on that journey, like, uh uh-uh, uh, you know what, never mind. I got this, I'm good. What kept you going? Ooh. I guess during that four years, one thing is that I didn't want to make a loan. Because I could have gone to uh, one of those private schools mm-hmm. and paid thirty thousand to get um, my cosmetology license. Mm -hmm. But I didn't want to make a loan Mm -hmm. and I wanted to pay cash. Mm -hmm. So I went with, at that time it was Memphis City School System and it happened during a time that they were doing the transition from MCS to SCA. Mm -hmm. And when they did, they cut back our days that we were going to school. So I went four days a week for like a whole year and a half And then the other, I had to only go two days a week. So going two days a week from four days a week, that was a big jump. Mm -hmm. And I knew that was going to take me a while to get finished, Mm -hmm. but I was able to pay cash and I didn't have to make a loan. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So that was important to me. So that was like one reason. And teaching, that's a lot. Lesson plans, grading papers. I was over different clubs at the school. I mean, so you, I had a lot going on, but it allowed me to pay off bills, to get some things in perspective. And from there, I just left. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And then what do you, what do you consider the greatest triumph that you've had to date with that whole process? Ooh. 
<laughs> you know, some people didn't like the way I did it. Uh, some people were surprised that I did it because I'm a scary girl when it comes to letting money go. <laughs> and I guess with health insurance was the biggest thing. Mm -hmm. Really, that was the biggest thing. That is probably what held me up the most okay. was health insurance mm -hmm. and letting go of health insurance. That was the biggest thing. Mm -hmm. uh, but my sister allowed me to live with her once I transitioned from school teacher to cosmetology. She allowed me to live with her and for me to figure out how I was going to pay my bills, was I going to have enough money to um, sustain for myself. Mm -hmm. And so I think I lived with her for about a year. And after a year, I had saved money. I had a steady clientele and I moved them on. Mm -hmm. So that was a blessing. Mm -hmm. That's a fantastic testimony. And in the same way that that Angie talked about how she was supported and, and people invested in her. You too, with your family, had someone making the investment in you and saying, you know, I will help you on your journey. I cannot stress enough how important it is for everyone that is in the sound of my voice. That sounds like a little church, don't mm -hmm. okay. Turn to your neighbor and tell and, and to, to share with other people the level of support that you can provide. It's so important for you to be a person to support another person's dream. You never know how that one positive word can take someone from being at a mediocre standpoint and pursuing it to knowing they have absolute confidence to pursue their dream and to achieve their goals. We have two examples right here today for people who have said, okay, you know what? Against our lives. I mean, because Adrian's story is not one that is like, you know what? I decided when I was in, you know, school that I was just going to go ahead and make this shift. I had a, she had four years. That's a huge investment, right? But she was making the investment in herself. So Adrian, I'm interested in knowing now that you're in a position where you are sustainable, you have, and I, and I challenge you to say that you don't have a steady, steady clientele, you have a growing clientele. <laughs> Because you regularly give me clients all the time. Yeah, I do. You have done, I have seen you do men, women, children. You cover the full spectrum of, um, of clients. And I am grateful that you both are part of the history that I had in my life, that you both did the hair for, for Shocker Man our wedding day, which was huge, right? I mean, that, yes. that was amazing. It was an amazing experience. And so... <clears throat> One of the things that I really appreciate about the the two of you is that you work independently, you own your own businesses, but you also are very supportive and very encouraging and loving with each other. Again, two black women supporting each other, dispelling myth, myth buster. That's what I am. I'm a myth, I'm a myth buster. So Adrian, you're doing uh -huh. natural hair now. I consider you, I know you can do all types of hair. We're going to talk about that in a minute. Is natural hair your sweet spot? Yeah, I guess so. <laughs> <laughs> Wait a second. Did you just have that realization? I mean, a lot of people have always said, and it, I'll tell you this. Okay. Um, back in 2015, mm -hmm. um, I had a Minty, who was like, please do natural hair. I want to go natural. And I have done her hair maybe about four or five years. And I told her, no, I don't do natural. And she said, oh, you're going to do natural. <laughs> and I told her, I said, no, I'm not. <laughs> but she begged me. And I started with her. She was my first uh, natural client. I think back in uh, 2015. Mm -hmm. And then from there, a lot of her friends mm -hmm. started going natural. Mm -hmm. And then they went off to college. And then I just started doing a whole lot of natural hair. Mm -hmm. And she kept saying to me, she said, and you said you weren't going to do natural. Right, I love that. I said, I know, right. <laughs> that is hilarious. And then to top that off, I went natural. <laughs> <laughs> I don't, 
I don't know what's wrong with me, but it happened. And your hair is amazing. <laughs> Thank you. One of the things that I think that's interesting is I didn't know that story that you resisted natural because you oh, yes. you show all time of styles. You do everything. But your natural hair clients, I think it's probably a huge portion of your clientele right now. Is it? Is that thing to say? Yeah, majority is natural clients. And it was crazy. From the first salon that I was in, I'm not a one strand. Shout out to them. Hello, Shisa. Um, she did not like to do natural hair. Okay. And so everybody who came into that salon, she threw them my way. Okay. And so that's another way how I started building my clientele to be natural. Okay. Because it wasn't natural with silk press. Okay. It was natural hairstyles. Okay. Talk more about that. What does that mean? First well, of all, what is, when we say natural, what does that mean? Because we want to have inform information and education as we part as we participate and go through this. What does that mean when we say natural hair? So natural hair is the natural state that your hair is in. To be honest with you, I'm technically not natural because I have a chemical in my hair. Mm -hmm. So natural is when you don't have any color, you don't have any chemicals in your hair. Mm -hmm. Like this baby, she, if y'all can see it, this is natural hair, look how long her hair is. Oh. Beautiful. Um, so she's natural, she doesn't have anything in her hair, she's never had anything in her hair. So a lot of times I am doing different twist outs, braids, different things like that in her hair. And so that's, using your natural curl pattern to style your hair. Mm -hmm. Now you have a natural that people call silk out. Mm -hmm. Basically, it's press and comb, okay? So when I do a silk out, I press the hair, and then I come back with the flat iron. And so when you say press, what does that mean? Oh, let me show you. We love show and tell. Okay, so that is that is what? You're not getting your hair pressed today. Okay. <laughs> She's like, no, Lord, no, I'm not. Thank you, Jesus. <laughs> so back in the day, this is what you would put on the stove, right? Heat up, or you use one of these stoves. What is that called in your hand? Uh, this is a pressing comb. Mm -hmm. This is, you. it heats up. And I like to use pressing comb with my silk out because this gets closed to the scalp mm -hmm. without burning it. Sometimes when you use flat irons mm -hmm. and you're trying to get close, mm -hmm. that steam burns mm -hmm. the client. So mm -hmm. if you come up with the press and comb first mm -hmm. and you get their roots and then you come back with the flat iron, mm -hmm. beautiful stick out. Okay. okay. So okay. some people like to use their curl patterns and then some natural people, they don't want, they want straight hair, but they don't want it by a chemical. Mm -hmm. They want it by the flat eye. Okay. Okay. So when we say natural hair, we, we are referring to African American women who are not doing anything to correct their natural curl pack. That's Even right. Even in many cases, natural women have color, but we still are considered natural. Okay. Yes. And so that is uh, hair angels. Yes. Hey, Candy. Hey, Rihanna. Hey, Tamika. I'm just leaning in while I'm. Uh, Looking, looking close, y'all see I'm looking real fine today. You still see the ring, but I, I do have the ring right on, but it's not mine. This is the one that's a lot. Each of them have their own. Actually, I told y'all they wanted to make sure I had one so I can look professional. So I'm looking real professional today. Sitting here getting my hair done. <laughs> so, Adrian. Yes. Natural hairstyle. What are some of the, you said twist out. What is that? Um, well, y'all well, can see it. Okay, so this is a twist. If you all have been watching my hands twist this long hair. So this is a twist out. A lot of times I do a lot of twist pinups. And then some people choose to just get the all over uh, twist out. Okay. It's just individual twists all over the head, let it dry, take it down, and they have volume. Some people like the twist where you're doing flat twists to the scalp with the pinup. Mm -hmm. uh, sometimes when you pin it up, then you might do a crochet in the front to mm -hmm. have the curls, mm -hmm. or you twist everything, you might have a bun. Uh, go on Panay Styles on Instagram, and you can see all my styles. Fantastic. So you do, there is a thing called a two-strand twist? Two-strand twist. twist. You got 
Well, three strands is basically a braid. Okay. Two strands is when I just lean back and let you see. You take two and you twist. And of course, I don't twist like this, but as you see, mm -hmm. this is the two going over. So that's okay. that twist that you all are seeing right You put back your hand um, behind it. Yep. There you go. Can there you see, see it? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And so you can leave it like that. Or people can get on the dryer and then untwist it and have the volume yes. in the curl pattern uh -huh. to do both. Okay. And then you had a client that was here before, the client you have now, who had natural hair and you did something different with her hair. What did you do with that? Okay. My client that I had before, she uh, wanted curls in her hair. So she decided she wanted to get her hair flexi rod. And so basically that is taking the flexi rods, um, and rolling her hair on them with a twist and a curl and a bend. I don't, I have to show you, it's hard to describe. But she had curls. And so with her, I had to shampoo condition her, blow her dry to stretch her out. And then from there, I took the flexi rod and some mousse and some cream and roll it up. And after rolling it up, let her sit underneath the dryer for about 40 minutes mm -hmm. and take it down. And she had spiral curls. It kind of looked like a one curl. Mm -hmm. So that... She's natural. She wanted curls, but she did not want heat or as Marcel's or flat irons. Okay. And so that was a way for her to achieve having curls. And when she finished, her hair was bouncy. It reminded me of Shirley Temple almost yeah. in terms of the way her curls were because they were so full and had so much volume. But you mentioned a, a, a thing I want to make sure we're clear about. You said you shampooed, conditioned her, and then you did something else. What else did you do? Or well, sometimes, according to the texture of the hair, of the curl pattern, sometimes you can actually use flexi rods on uh, the wavy hair, and it will lay flat. It's according to the curl pattern. Mm -hmm. But with her curl pattern, I had to blow her dry because she had shrinkage, and I needed to have the hair pull it out. Mm -hmm. So when I was able to uh, relax her curls with the blow dryer, then I was able to curl it. So it stretched her hair out. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So that's stretching the, the, the curliness of the curl pattern mm -hmm. to make it elongated so that it can go into the flexi rod. That's right. Okay. All right. And so how many clients do you think are in a position where they are on the fence about being natural, especially with what's happening with the coronavirus? Hmm. You have quite a few. I had one person, um, actually I have two people right now who are beginning to transition. Mm -hmm. They don't want to claim it, <laughs> but they're saying, I want to get a relaxer right now. Mm -hmm. I want to continue to get protective style. Mm -hmm. Yeah, about four more months, their hair is going to be fully <laughs> natural and we're going to have to cut off the rest. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Uh, but a lot of people are really thinking about it because they're very scared of the pandemic mm -hmm. and they think we're, they think we're going to have to end up closing down. So some people are getting ready uh, just by trying to do natural hairstyles mm -hmm. now mm -hmm. and transitioning mm -hmm. and doing protective styles. Smart. Okay, one of the things that I thought that you did that was also smart, during the quarantine, initial quarantine, you were able to go live and you went live. We had a whole system, right? I went live at lunch at 11.30 and you went live at 1. So <laughs> tell everybody, what were you doing when you went live at 1 during quarantine? Well, because I used to be a teacher, I love to talk and I love to educate. And so I was just thinking, I was getting bored at home, and I was like, how can I connect with my clients? And how can I get them to take care of their hair, even though I'm not able to do anything with them? And so I decided to start talking to them about hair care. And I always talk to my clients all the time in my chair about hair care. But it was something about when you can't touch the hair, you can't show them, and you can't explain it was hard. People mm -hmm. were calling me, asking me, what can I do? What I need to do? Mm -hmm. You sure you, you can't make house calls? Uh, no. <laughs> so <laughs> I had to think, what can I do to help out my clients? Mm -hmm. And so I just came up with different topics that I felt that the clients needed to know. Mm -hmm. And so 
from that, I started coming up with different questions that they might ask or they would want to ask. And then mm -hmm. from there, I just started going Monday, Wednesday, and Friday. Mm -hmm. And the name of your series at the time that you were doing it was called what? Ask This Stylist. And you covered a full spectrum of things. <laughs> Talk, review some of the things and share what are some of the topics that you covered during Ask This Stylist. Oops, sorry, baby. Um, I talked about collagen. Mm -hmm. I talked about collagen, and I talked about how it was important um, to take care of your hair inside out. Mm -hmm. Because a lot of times people don't understand that your hair grows or what's going on inside of your body. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And a lot of people think that if I buy this product and put it on my scalp, if I buy this product, that my hair is going to grow. Um, there are some things that can manipulate your scalp and your hair, but if you can take care of your hair and what's going on the inside of your body, you'll get better results. Mm -hmm. And so collagen is a certain type of powder that if you add in your coffee, your juice, your smoothie, um, it actually helps with your joints, your bones, um, nails, and hair. And so I talked about that and let them know what was the best kind to use and how to use it. And then I went from there to talk about Deserve professional hair care products. Mm -hmm. And so with Deserve, Deserve products is a good product to moisturize and to grow your hair from the outside. And so from there, we have the derma roller. Mm -hmm. And with the derma roller, if you have alopecia of loss of hair, this was the best way to um, grow your hair from the outside. Mm -hmm. And so Angela H. Brown, who is my sister, she talked me into um, selling a product. Mm -hmm. Even though I sold it inside the salon, she mm -hmm. was like, no, you can become an affiliate now. All your clients, you can begin to sell them the product from the house. And I'll go deliver it for you. And you can get paid. Mm -hmm. Oh, I needed mm -hmm. some money. Mm -hmm. Not that I didn't save and put that for rainy days. Mm -hmm. But this really, really helped me. Because mm -hmm. I was getting depressed, sad, coming up in my bills. Uh, I really didn't want to go into this fund. Mm -hmm. um, but it helped. It really did. And what type of products are available that, um, through the Deserve line? Well, with the Deserve line, you have the shampoo and conditioner. You have the elixir, and the elixir is the oil uh, that grows your hair back, and that's what I told you for the benefits from the outside. Mm -hmm. And it stimulates your hair follicles, and it helps your hair grow. Mm -hmm. It also oils your scalp, and it's an oil, not a grease, mm -hmm. so it does not clog your pores. From there, you have a derma roller, and the derma roller also helps you um, stimulate the hair growth it opens up the skins and the hair follicles and then you use the oil and the oil soaks in and your hair really begins to grow okay so a lot of men were calling me uh one because they want to grow their beards mm -hmm. because their beards were patchy mm -hmm. did you use this one okay and oh for a second all right so there. there you go yeah, you can leave that on. Okay, I'm back. So the men were using for their bald spots. Mm -hmm. So before they go and get a man unit, mm -hmm. and I had one guy tell me, he said, hey, I was about to go and get a man unit. Mm -hmm. And he and said, a man unit, a lot of people don't know, but African-American men are beginning to use, uh, what do they call them? Uh, with their man units, but... Uh, I can't think of that. We, well, yes, we. Who are those music? That um, Tupac. There you oh, go. Good thing. Oh, sure, yeah. Good thing. I was like, what's the name of that thing? It's flapping. That's why I kept doing it. <laughs>
So African American men usually don't use toupees, but now they are. We don't call them toupees, we call them man units. Okay. Okay. So they shave off the area in the hair, they fade their side, they lay down with some type of adhesive, mm -hmm. and it blends in. You'll never know. But it has really done wonderful things for um a man's self-esteem. Mm -hmm. It really does. Mm -hmm. If you know a man who has one, he walks differently. Mm -hmm. it, and some people don't even know, but if, mm -hmm. you're like, I thought he was bald all over. Where did he get this? I know a couple of people who wear them. If you didn't know them before, you didn't know that they have one on okay, now. Super. But so um, instead of the, the, the fine that you mentioned, instead of him getting a man unit, mm -hmm. he, I love how we made a man unit, a man's cave, man <laughs> unit, you know. Men have to have their own special heavy man in front of them, right? Yes. Instead of just saying you got some hair, or you got a uh, weave, or you got, you know, trimmed. But the client said he was on his way to get a man unit. Yes. And instead of getting the man unit, he got the derma roller and the elixir. And the elixir. Okay. And then how, how, what's his testimony? How did it work for him? It's growing. Wonderful. It is growing. It's not as full as he would want it, mm -hmm. but I had to let him know his hair fell out over time. Slowly, right. And it was a slow process, but it is coming back and it is filling in. So right Wonderful. now he's not getting a man unit. Okay. Fantastic. Now, so, if people want to schedule time with you, because I know they will, I know a lot of different people who are in a position that are saying, you know, I don't know what I'm going to do with my hair. Um, you know, I know we may be quarantined again. I may need to get my hair done, but I need to get shampooed or conditioned or trimmed, but I don't want to get relaxed. How do they get in touch with you? How do they schedule time with you? Well, you can schedule time with me. One, you can give me a call at 901-258-1967. And if you give me a call, uh, I can set you up on my schedule listity. Um, Panache Styles. If you go to my um, website, panachehaircare.com, you can book from there to the link. If you go on Instagram, panache.styles, I have the booking link. And if you go to Panache Styles on Facebook, I also have the booking link where you just click on it and you can book. Um, but if you need to have consultation, if you need to give me a call, uh, sometimes I do um, FaceTime consultations and others, you can schedule time to come in for me to see you. So do you suggest or advise clients that are considering coming in to do a consultation with you first? Uh, yes, if you're going, if you're getting color, yes. Uh, because I don't do color on the first time that you visit me. Okay. Because I need to uh, look at your hair, service your hair a couple of times uh, before into to determine if you are a candidate for color. Also, if you're going through transition, I need to be able to look at your hair, understand what's going on, and try to figure out, have that conversation, what is it that you want uh, to do? And when you say transition, hair. what does that mean? Transitioning from either relaxer to uh, natural or natural to relaxer. Okay, and then what about people that are um, pregnant and, and women that are having hair loss as a result of pregnancy. Do you have clients that, that suffer with that? I have. I've had have some clients that have had those issues. And we've used deserve. And when I tell you that deserve has grown their hair. It has grown the hair back. It's amazing, but that's that postpartum that they're going through that a lot of women don't know about. Mm -hmm. Their hair grow a whole lot while they're pregnant, but once uh, they have the baby, their hair will shed and fall out. It doesn't happen to everyone, mm -hmm. but it happens to some of them. Okay. And when it happens, it comes out a lot. Oh, wow. um, you might have it around your edges. You might have it in the top of your head. You never know where it's going to begin to shed and to fall off. Okay. Uh, so, from, you know, come in and I tell people, just don't deal with it at home. Actually come in, see someone so that mm -hmm. we can get you on the right path to start growing your hair back. Mm -hmm. And as a business owner, what would you tell, I asked Angie the same question, what would you tell someone who, like you, was a kitchen beautician mm -hmm. and is interested now in wanting to make the transition, but, you know, see some, some road, roadblocks? What would you say? 
I would tell them to plan. Um, it's going to be, you're going to be fearful of the transition, but it's one of those things you must do uh, so that you can make the money that you deserve to make. Mm -hmm. Some people like would like to keep you in the kitchen so they can pay you that kitchen price. Mm -hmm. Others want to see you uh, reach your goals. And so I would tell you, think about yourself. Think about how you even want to, uh, the atmosphere. You know, mm -hmm. home is nice, it's laid back, but the atmosphere that you want to give your clientele, mm -hmm. um, you, you want to give your clients something nice, something where they can feel relaxed. Mm -hmm. um, you don't want to fear that somebody's going to come back and um, rob you at your home because mm -hmm. now they know where you live. Mm -hmm. I know someone right now, she really wants to get out the home, but she's so comfortable. And she's a young girl. Mm -hmm. And I told her, you can't build your clientele because one, you live in your mom's house. Mm -hmm. Two, you're afraid to bring other people to their mom's house because you don't really know who they are. So you can't spread the word about that if you do of units and extensions mm -hmm. because of fear. And I understand that. I had a limited clientele that I allowed to come to my home. Mm -hmm. But I was like, if you want to build, you have to come into a setting. You have to come into a salon. Mm -hmm. If you're going to come into a salon or a salon suite, you have to... You have to take that step mm -hmm. because if you do, I promise you, it will take your business to the next level. Mm -hmm. That's good. That's very good. And going to the next level, you've gone to the next level too. You are now not just selling and distributor, but are an affiliate. And as Angie mentioned, you're also teaching people. But tell me more about that. So with Deserve Professional Hair Care Products, um, Angela Hughes made a line starting out for professional uh, barbers and also uh, stylists. Uh -huh. And so it was made for a certain product that could stop shedding within one setting. Uh -huh. And I mean 99% of shedding stop. And that is one of her products that uh, only stylists can purchase. Uh -huh. And so you have to teach a person how to use this. And from there, she made up some other products to go along with it that the salon could use, and then finally, that your clients could use. Uh -huh. And so from there, she taught us that, you know, within her team, she taught us how to go out there and to start doing classes and also sell from behind the chair to your clients, but also tell other people within your salon. So with her on her team, I travel with her to sell the products, but also to do different classes uh, with her for other stylists. And that required additional training on your your home. Yes. Okay. We okay. have had additional training. She trains all of her stylists who want to be on her team. Mm -hmm. And then from there, we go out and then we begin to teach. Okay. So you have stacks on stacks on stacks of, of training. <laughs> yeah. You got to. <laughs> and, and what she has going on, yes, you mm -hmm. have to be trained. Mm -hmm. And then one of the things that I love, like I said, you get in this, and as an educator, you'll appreciate this. I'm sure that you literally never stop growing, right? You never stop learning because there are going to be constant techniques, constant updates, constant tools, implements, things that like your client that you had in your chair now came in with the photo from Pinterest. So you immediately had to say, okay, what do I do? How to do this? Do I need to, you know, set up expectation and make sure I'm level set with her? to understand this is what this will look like on you as opposed to you know what this picture looks like. And it just continues to grow. And one of the things that Angie said that I think is is key for stylists and for people to understand about stylists is that you're not doing hair, you're creating, right? That you're really truly it, it they're we're walking around with work of art. I mean I I feel like that when my hair is done, that I'm walking around with work of art on my hair. And if someone wants to model and mimic the teal color block, then I think that's great. <laughs> I mean, I have, have demonstrated and I'm showcasing, I'm a model, right? So I look at it as I'm really just modeling the hair for the stylist. And that's mm -hmm. what happens with each of us, right? I mean, that's, that's really what it is. And so when you look at this business, this is a multi-billion dollar business, right? Yes. Hair 
has always been a factor. For as long as people have been breathing, something's been happening with their hair, right? Mm -hmm. And that's not going to change. One of the main things that people talk about, and y'all remember this, I'm going to put a little bit of politics in this, and then we're going to wrap up, because this has been the longest live in life. <laughs> y'all can watch it, you have seen that. Um, but one of the main things that people complained about in Michigan, right, was that they wanted to go and get their hair cut and get their hair done, get their hair cut. To the point where they were protesting. The protest that in Michigan, Michigan literally went to the state capitol and complained. Y'all remember that? Because they, they quarantined, and I'm saying y'all, y'all, not y'all, <laughs> that they were literally protesting on the, at the state capitol because they, one of the things they were upset about, they felt like their human rights were being violated, which is a farce, but that they wanted to go and get their hair done. Yeah. Fighting, you you want to fight a pandemic. You're willing to risk your life to get your hair done. To me, that says hair is pretty dang on important. These two styles are two phenomenal representations of how you can absolutely achieve your goal. You can absolutely have a dream. You can write it down. You can make a plan. You can put the energy and dedication you have to put into it. You can push through the trials and you can triumph. Angie Casper and Avery Hughes are two living testimonies of that. And if you didn't believe it ever before, that black women can get along and support each other, guess what? Here we are! Three black women who are amazingly talented and gifted in our own right, and we all love and support each other, and we have done that forever, and we will continue to do that. So, Panache Style, Hair Angel Love, T. Row and Co., three businesses, in one place, supporting each other. Imagine that. Yes. Black girl power. Black girl magic. Black we girls rock. I was going to say, we rock. Black, 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 black. Black, black. <laughs> and for all of our people who are not black, we still love you. We love you too. We just love ourselves. We love you too. And so I want you all to know, that this, I hope, I, I'll give you an opportunity to ask a question. And hold on, I'm going to lean. When she finishes this one, I'm going to lean forward and see if you guys have any questions that I may have missed for Adrian or Angie. Because I want to make sure that you get your questions in. And I'm going to do a quick, quick recap so that if you miss anything, because y'all see, I'm just looking like, you know, what done to that right before you ask. <laughs> um, that there are a couple of things coming up here at Here Angel Love. That are going to be at, at, oh wait, Cammy, you just say this has been a fantastic behind the scenes look. Oh, yeah. <laughs> I don't want y'all to know. I can announce publicly. I said this to Cammy last night. Cammy, thank you so much for being. Uh, Cammy is one of my friends. She and I met forever ago, like twenty some odd years ago. She even lived on the same street we lived in Midtown before she moved. Cammy family, y'all has been on every single live that I have had. Oh. So, Cammy, thank you so much. I love you. Thank you for supporting me. And it's it's a if lunchtime is almost over, if not, it's over somewhere. <laughs> <laughs> this is an extended lunch. And, and every now and then you get a chance to take one of those. But today I'm grateful that you decided to take the time to be with me, Tracy T, for another installment of T Row. Who, with the crew, you know what we do. It's live and run. Adrian Hughes from our style. Adrian can be found on Instagram, Facebook, Schedulicity, call or text message. Um, what's your number, Adrian? 901 1967. Look her up on Facebook, Instagram. All of her name is all the same. She did a great job with her branding. It's all the same. It's Panache Styles. Adrian Hughes, Panache Styles. If you want to get with her, get with her because she's already doing a double thing. Don't get out. <laughs> Don't walk around looking like a little fool. I'm, I'm trying to tell you now because it, it's, it's up to you. You got a choice. You can be fantastic or you can be funny good. <laughs> I'm going with fantastic. Thank you, Adrian, for taking time to be with me today and in the midst of doing your client. But I know you want to make sure you focus because the baby is serious about her hair. <laughs> <And> <laughs> 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 
with her fantastic, beautiful, gorgeous hair and her amazing socks that are unicorns with wings. <laughs> Angie Panther, hair angel love, owner, proprietor, hair extraordinaire, stylist. She does it all. If you got hair, get it here because she can do it. Color, cut, relax, natural, crochet, obviously. And she will make a wig for you. And she is amazing. These two women, they're in Bible at this salon. If you need your hair done, there's no reason for it not to go. Oh, Tracy, can I throw one more thing in there? Of course. At the Shop and Spa on the Spa and Shop COVID edition mm -hmm. on September the 13th, mm -hmm. please give me a call because I am doing the detox, foot detox, and sugar scrub. I'm going to be uh, massaging your feet oh. and um, doing a sugar scrub after you detox for about 20 minutes. So please give me a call. I want you to uh, book a time with me. Um, doing that spa session, okay, on September the 13th. So I am not doing a pedicure though. Okay, let me get that on set. I'm not paying toes. I am detoxing and scrubbing and massaging your feet. On, all, on, on behalf of all the nail techniques in the land, I want you to know you don't pay to polish. Oh, okay. Well, I'm not polishing. However, come on, let me say this. September 13th, sip and shop. No, spa and shop. Oh, I, I like to sip. That's me. <laughs> you will be <laughs> sipping on that day, though. We will have something to sip. <laughs> on September 13th at what time? It's at oh, I got it. Okay, let me make sure I get this right. I'm going to post this so you guys have this too. It'll be on this page and on my personal page. September 13th, starting at 1030 in the parking lot at 27, 6, 27, 2740. Okay, take 10. September 10th. Take 25. <laughs> September 13th, starting at 1030, <laughs> here at 2740 Barber Boulevard in the parking lot, we'll have spa and show. And it is going to be Hair Angel Love in the parking lot, social distancing. Is there going to be food trucks? It's going to be amazing. There's going to be services available. And you just heard about one of the services. And Brenna, I just saw you on here. I know that you're going to be providing some services too. So feel Tell free, me, Steve. Feel free to, to Brenna to put on here what you're going to be doing so people will know. And put your information on there so they'll know how to go ahead and get time together with you so we can take advantage of these services. Because I don't know about y'all, but with the sugar scrubs sounds pretty dang on the maze. Now, Strangers are going to have something to say about that. Uh -huh. Oh, don't worry. You're going to have a special appointment like you have now. So, <laughs> what I want you to know is you need to connect with these two women. You need to connect with them and get your services scheduled because that's around the corner. September 13th will be here in no time. And then on August 30th, there is a class mm -hmm. that is going to be held, and it is ten dollars. You need to do hashtag Hair Angel Love and cash. App. No, that's not true. Double sign Hair Angel Love and Cash App, so you can pay the ten dollars for your plan. And Angie, what is pay the ten dollars for your plan? Group? What is it? Your plan? Mm -hmm. All of the uh, um, service providers for September thirteenth event. You'll be able to. And if you want to have the institution, our expert in money team, the foot detox, the massage therapy, you'll be able to ask all the questions that you've ever wanted to ask um, for the last extension, last thing. If you've ever thought about these stories, you are really getting more how they work or, you know, the, the repercussions from having all of those things, you'll be able to ask all those questions mm -hmm. and book your appointment for that uh, spa and shop. Uh, Day that we're going to have, but I mean, I know I have a lot of time that I need to go get something done, mm -hmm. but mm -hmm. I'm not going to know who to ask questions to. Mm -hmm. When you look online, you can give you so many different questions and so many different answers. Mm -hmm. You don't really know what works for you. Mm -hmm. So, on that day for the class, you'll be able to ask as many questions as you like to mm -hmm. understand the services and to sign up for something. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And we'll also have some special coupons to give away. That class two for your upcoming service. And Brenna just posted the information on here. Brenna, you put your URL on there. Also, put your cell phone number so people will know um, what the services are that you provide. She is new to her as well and is an absolute delight. She brings a wealth of services and is just 100% focused on customer service. I love her. I love her. You may not the shop. And, um, and she does the Yoni's thing. 
So now if you don't know what the only thing is, look it up. Come um, to the class. <laughs> pay your ten dollars and get your get in the class so you'll learn more. You'll get a chance to meet Brenna. Um let me say this before I go. I have fun with just about everybody I talk to and every opportunity I can, but it is serious that you make sure that you support these local businesses. It is serious that you support black businesses. We are in a time financially where businesses are relying on you and me to stay afloat, to stay in business. It is important for us to make sure that we are registered if we're not registered to vote. It is important for you to make sure that you are actively engaged and actively engage others. I am doing this not just for me to be able to connect, but for us to be able to connect together. I want y'all to have a wonderful day. Oh my gosh, that's the most amazing event ever. And thank you so much for spending time with me. I'm going to make sure that I post the information when I finish, when I get in the car and I sit down. I'm not going to do it now because I want to be fantastic. Uh, for the August 30th event, for the September 13th event, and for Brenda's corporate information, here, how you can contact her, and then how you can reach Angie Castor for Angel Love to schedule time, and how you can reach Adrian Hughes for my styles to schedule time with her. You guys are absolutely amazing. And remember, you matter to me. I love you, and there's nothing you can do about it. I hope that you have a wonderful Wednesday. Remember to live like it's a gift and make everything amazing. I'll see you on Friday. Bye. You saying bye, Bye, everybody. You're to get my hair done. <laughs>